Gordon Moore, the founder of Intel, famously prophesied that the number of transistors on a microchip would double every two years, leading to smaller, faster, and more efficient chips. This exponential growth meant all of our computations, from things like our smartphones to the world's supercomputers, got incredibly more powerful. Now, unfortunately, that trend has started to die. Why, you ask? Well, because we've shrunk transistors down to the atomic level. And at that scale, the weird rules of quantum physics start to take over. Our electrons are now hitting physical limits. They're bumping into each other and generating so much heat, we can't shrink them anymore. But this year's Nobel Prize in Physics has just been awarded to a discovery that may change everything. John Clark, Michael Devray, and John Martinez were recognized for their groundbreaking research on macroscopic quantum tunneling. In essence, they proved you could get electrical currents to do the impossible, pass straight through a solid wall. This is the principle of quantum tunneling. Hey Space Cats, I'm Dr. Maggie Lou, and in this week's video, let's talk about quantum tunneling. So to understand the Nobel Prize, we first need to understand a thing called quantum tunneling. So imagine coming to the edge of a wall without enough energy. You wouldn't be able to climb over it. But in the quantum world, particles are described by a wave function. And this wave function can actually leak into the regions where the particle shouldn't be able to exist. And this is because its total energy is lower than the barrier's potential energy, the minimum energy required to jump over that wall. This means that there's a finite probability for this particle to suddenly appear on the other side of the wall even though it didn't have enough energy to pass through it classically. It simply tunnels through. Now, this idea is not new. Quantum tunneling has been observed for nearly a century now. It explains why radioactive decay is a probabilistic process, such as when an alpha particle tunnels out of its nucleus. It's also essential for nuclear fusion in our sun, where the temperature and pressure are actually too low for two protons to overcome their Coulomb repulsion in order to form a helium nucleus. Electron tunneling was so important that the 1973 Nobel Prize in Physics was partly awarded for experimental discoveries of electron tunneling in semiconductors and superconductors. But all of this previous work was on microscopic particles, so electrons, protons, and atomic nuclei. So Schrodinger's famous thought experiment was meant to illustrate the absurdity of quantum physics at the macroscopic scale. Schrodinger's cat is the cat that is simultaneously both alive and dead. While a microscopic particle can exist in two states at once, a thing that we call superposition, any large system will instantly collapse to one definite state because of interaction with the environment. So when we look inside of the box with the cat, the cat is either dead or alive, not both. Now in 1978, a future Nobel laureate named Anthony Leggett actually challenged the world to see if this collapse could be preventable. Could we actually observe a quantum tunneling event in a macroscopic system? This brings us to the 2025 Nobel Prize awarded to Clark, Devereux, and Martinez, who proved it was actually possible. They used a device called the Josephson Junction. Now, this is a circuit which consists of two superconductors that are separated by a thin insulating barrier, just a few nanometers thick. The superconductors are a special material that when cooled below a certain critical temperature will lose all electrical resistance. This means an electric current can flow through it forever without losing energy as heat. In a superconductor, electrons don't move individually, but instead form pairs known as Cooper pairs. These pairs move together in this perfect synchrony, behaving like a single unified quantum wave. They behave collectively as a single macroscopic quantum state. 
The insulating layer acts as a physical barrier. Classically, the current shouldn't be able to pass through this barrier at all. The challenge for the team though was to prove that not only just individual particles, but the entire ensemble of particles, the billions of those Cooper pairs, could actually tunnel through the barrier as a single quantum system. Now, this phenomenon is known as macroscopic quantum tunneling. To verify it, they had to rule out every possible source of classical noise that might imitate a quantum signal. Their experimental setup was extraordinary. A multi-stage filtering system that provided over 200 decibels of dampening to block environmental microwave radiation. At extremely cold temperatures, they proved that macroscopic quantum tunneling was occurring. The current tunnels out, the state changes, causing this non-zero voltage to appear across the junction. This voltage blip is that signal that macroscopic quantum tunneling was occurring. It matched perfectly with what was predicted by theory. And on top of that, they demonstrated energy quantization. So in the quantum world, energy is not continuous, but exists only in discrete fixed amounts called quanta, hence quantum mechanics. Clark, Devray, and Martinez performed a type of spectroscopic measurement on this system. They introduced microwaves of all different wavelengths to the trapped current, and they showed that their superconducting circuit absorbed and emitted energy only in specific discrete energy levels, just like a single atom would. This proved the setup acted as a macroscopic quantum object, essentially a man-made artificial atom. This achievement, creating this macroscopic, stable, artificial atom, is the reason why the end of Moore's law just doesn't matter anymore. It provides the two quantized energy levels needed to form a superposition, where the system can exist as both zero and one simultaneously. In other words, this gives us the foundation of a qubit, the fundamental building block of a quantum computer. I made a whole video on quantum computing if you need a deeper dive. The future of computing isn't about the size of the transistor anymore. We don't need to get any smaller, but it's about the state of the qubit. Quantum tunneling is a secret weapon because it allows the qubit to be in a superposition, a state of zero and one simultaneously. This allows quantum computers to perform vast numbers of computations in parallel, potentially revolutionizing fields like machine learning and artificial intelligence. It also promises unbreakable encryption through quantum cryptography, a field that arose directly from this same physics. Of course, we're not quite there yet. The first coherent quantum oscillation lasted just three nanoseconds, and this was back in 1999. Today, thanks to innovations like the transmon qubit, Superconducting circuits have become one of the most promising platforms in the global race to build a large-scale quantum computer. Anyway, that's all I have time for this week. Thank you to my YouTube Perks members for supporting this video. If you enjoyed it, please don't forget to leave me a like, share, and subscribe. Hey, space cats, fly with me to the stars, faster than light. Sorry.